in one of my other videos, I talk about how to add LED lights to your model so that you can see it um, in poor conditions or in dusk or dawn. And um, in that other video, there's an awful lot of questions about this thing here, which is the Turnergy receiver controlled on off switch. And it's a little um, device that can put into one of the spare channels of your receiver and can actually act as a little on off switch. So what I'll do is I'll just open it here, show you what's in the packet, and I'll actually show you how to use this thing and a couple of gotchas when you're using it. So inside the packet, don't need that now, um, we obviously have the device, it's nice and small. There are two jumpers on the end and on the back there is a little reminder of exactly what those jumpers do. There's a connection up to the receiver and on the other end there's just two wires that um, go into the positive side of whatever it is you're going to power. Now this thing can only handle uh, 30 volts max 10 amps so you're not going to want to run a motor through it but it's great for things like auxiliary lighting, things like landing gear, anything that you want an on off with the switch on your remote control. You also get a nice little diagram and uh, we'll kind of go through this now and I'll explain it in a little bit more detail. The trick here is whenever you're using a second battery is you always connect the negative side and we'll explain why that is. So, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to connect this up. Um, so let me just prove everything kind of works. I'm leaving all of the soldering a little bit uh, bare so that you can see exactly what wires are going to where and it'll also allow me to kind of build this thing pretty quick too. So here we go, we're gonna plug the lights in. There we go, the lights are working. So what, what I'll do now is um, using um, a UBEC and a receiver, we'll actually wire this thing in and we'll come back and have a look at it and also look at a diagram of that as well. The first thing you have to do is make sure that on your receiver you have a channel that you can use that go that you can have endpoints on an on off position. So typically a gear switch or an auxiliary one switch or something like that. Now on my DX7 we're going to use this uh, gear switch. So I'm going to plug this Turnergy switch into the gear channel of this receiver and um, then we'll go from there. Now the nice thing is you can tell the switch how to behave, whether you want it to basically connect the two wires, these two wires together by having the switch in a high or low position, whether it remembers it from last time or how it wants to work. So you don't necessarily have to reverse the channel on the radio, but if this is buried in the middle of a quadcopter or something else, then it makes it, um, gives you a couple of options. Okay, so let me briefly um, turn off the camera and we'll come back and we'll have a look at this in action with this setup so we can control these lights using a switch on the remote. So here we are, we're now connected up. So we're running off the same battery. I'm just running off the balance tap for the light just to make it simple so I don't have to cut into the Dean's connectors I've already done. But basically the same battery is now connected to the lights and also powering the receiver. The gear channel is plugged into the receiver, that's plugged into the switch, and the positive lead that goes to the lights now goes through that switch. And it's the gear channel on the radio if I flick the gear channel, you'll see the lights come on. Now, interestingly here, if I just um, show you the way it works, um, when the lights, with both of the jumpers installed, when the channel is high, the lights are on. When the channel is low, the lights are off. And on this DX7, position zero is high for the gear channel the lights are on which is not perfect so I would always have zero being off and one being on but that does mean now that I can control those lights using this little switch now if I actually wanted to swap that on the radio I could just reverse the channel or 
by reading the back of the switch, what I could do is actually change the jumpers. Now, the thing that seems to cause uh, people problems is when they're using a separate second battery to run the switch from. So let me show you what that looks like. I'll just um, put another battery in this circuit and we'll come back and have a look. So here we are, we have the same setup. The battery is powering the receiver. The receiver is plugged into the gear channel. The gear channel then is going to control basically whether these two wires are connected together or not. But this time, the load that we're trying to control is running off a second battery. Now, if I flick the gear switch, nothing happens. And that's because the commons on both of these aren't together. If you want to run it like this, so you have a flight battery and you're controlling something else that's going to uh, run it, what you have to do is collect, connect the negative side of this battery to the negative side of this battery and it'll work. So let me just do that and I'll prove it. Okay, so here's that same setup. We have a battery that's going to run whatever the load is. We have a battery that's actually powering a UBEC, powering the receiver, and the switch is connected between. And what I've done is I've just connected the, the ground, um, and I could have taken it from anywhere off the top circuit, but I've actually taken it from one of the inputs on the um, radio, and I've actually just plugged that lead into the negative terminal of the Dean's connector. So essentially now both of the negative sides of this battery and this battery are connected together. And now it works. If I disconnect that negative lead and flick the switch now, it doesn't. And that's the thing that seems to catch a lot of different people out, is that if you are going to run a separate load with this switch, you have to connect the negative side of both of the power sources together so you have a common ground throughout the entire system for this little thing to work. So in diagram form, here's the uh, two packs together. So they're very similar to what we have on the bench. And here is that connection that you need to make between both for it to work. Hopefully that saves some of you out there some head scratching and answered the questions for those other subscribers who were interested in getting this sorted out. If you have any questions, please comment and post them. And my help out channel is available if you need to speak to me. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.